It is absolutely no secret that right now the largest financial institutions on earth are stepping into the blockchain industry in a massive way. But in this video, I want to share with you exactly why they will choose the XRP ledger and work with Ripple to digitize their financial products. Guys, what we are watching right now is a revolution to the entire financial system. And there is something key that is different with the XRP ledger and Ripple strategy that no other blockchain can compete with. In this video, I want to share with you what that thing is and share with you a brand new interview of Archex's CEO talking about this exact thing. Guys, this is the CEO who predicted $50 trillion would be trading on the XRP ledger in the next couple of years. This is an interview you are not going to want to miss. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to like these videos and subscribe to the channel. These two simple things really do mean so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, I want to start out this video and share with you the two key things that are differentiated with the XRP ledger in comparison to every other blockchain out there that I believe is going to make it an obvious choice for institutions to ultimately adopt. After I talk about these things, I want to share with you an amazing interview of the CEO of Archex, one of the leaders in tokenizing the traditional financial system on blockchain technology, confirm what I am saying and actually say some very exciting things about the XRP ledger in particular. Now guys, the first thing that really differentiates the XRP ledger and Ripple is compliance. Almost every other blockchain out there is not focused on compliance in the slightest, but Ripple has taken precautions to make sure they are as compliant as possible. Now, this might not be an exciting, sexy thing, but it is absolutely necessary to large institutions stepping into these protocols. Large institutions need to follow Know Your Customer. They need to follow sanction lists, all kinds of different things that no other blockchain is focused on. But it is something that is on the top of Ripple's mind. Ripple already makes sure that all their customers are KYC and AML compliant, but they are also building things directly into the XRP ledger to make it institutionally ready. Things like DID, things like clawbacks, things that are going to be necessary for institutions to utilize to adopt this technology in a real way. Guys, these are the things that are not optional for institutions. They are necessary. And what you're going to hear from the CEO of Archex is it is one of the biggest reasons why he is so excited to work with Ripple going forward in the future. Guys, the other thing that almost no one talks about is the functionality of the XRP ledger. Almost every other blockchain out there has smart contracts built on top of it. These smart contracts segregate liquidity. All these different blockchains have a million different DEXs. They have a million different protocols that all do the same thing. And those protocols all fight with one another to aggregate as much AUM as possible. As in the XRP ledger, you don't have smart contracts. And this has been seen as a bad thing for a long time. But when you really think about it, in my eyes, it's a blessing in disguise because what we have is core functionality built directly into the protocol itself. So you don't need some kind of smart contract built on top of the platform. The functionality is inherent to the blockchain. Take a look at automated market makers. Rather than having 10 to 15 automated market makers built on the XRP ledger, we have a single one that sources all the liquidity. In my eyes, this is a much more efficient system. It's a much smarter system, and it's a system built for institutions. Rather than having to trust a developer who is building some random smart contract on a blockchain, you can instead put your trust in the protocol itself because the AMM on the XRP ledger is built layer one. These two things in combination with one another are absolutely critical to institutional adoption, and I don't think enough people are paying attention to these things at all. A lot of people are focused on NFTs, hype things, different things that I don't believe institutions have any interest in. What institutions are interested in is adopting this technology, but they can't adopt this technology if it's going to cause them to violate 15 different rules that are imposed upon them by regulators. Ripple is focused on the most important thing, holding these institutions hands through the onboarding process and allowing these products to actually be used by the institutions, allowing DeFi to be used by these institutions, allowing these institutions to adopt these protocols for their full intended use case. Guys, this is why I believe the XRP ledger is going to win out. 
because the large institutions in today's world hold all the value. They hold all the money. They hold all the assets that will eventually be tokenized. The assets, the tokenization strategies are not going to be created out of nowhere. They are not going to come grassroots. They are going to come from the legacy financial system being onboarded into the new one. I believe Ripple has a massive head start in onboarding these institutions. And I believe they are putting the strategies in place today to continue winning this race. But guys, I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to listen to the CEO of Archex specifically talk about this. Because what you are going to understand is that while the XRP ledger and Ripple might not be on the top of mind for people that are just looking to speculate on these technologies, who are more retail focused, who are looking to do different things with NFTs, it is absolutely on the mind of the biggest institutions out there and it's not even close. Many times I think people forget that there's different customer bases out there. Some people are focused on retail. Some people are focused on institutions. And I think a lot of times in the blockchain community, people think that because they don't see the XRP ledger being talked about by retail, it means it isn't being talked about by institutions. Guys, I can tell you that's the furthest thing from the truth, but listen up to our checks here. I think this is a very important interview for you to see. 30 to 50 trillion, all on XRP, all trading on Artex. <laughs> here we go. Find my original projections, but the, t the total market is 1.4 quadrillion, everything that's ever out there. And if you start looking across any of those asset classes, they're all starting to move on chain already. Um, and the ease with which we've seen people interested in the money market fund, tokenized treasuries and those types of instruments, the support for stable coins, when you're talking about replacing cash, when I see DTCC, Euroclear, Clearstream, you know, it only takes one of them to flip onto natively digital. And that's trillions of assets um, on its own that move. So, you know, tens of trillions, I think we could see. And bearing in mind it's 1.4 quadrillion, this is still a tiny slice of a huge market. You know, 30 to 50 trillion, all on XRP, all trading on Artex. <laughs> Here we go, 50 trillion dollars. Two years from now, Ripple Twitter will replay the session. That's one with Ripple. Again, really excited about it. We've been chatting to those guys for four years. Um, we use Metico, which was recently bought by Ripple. We've got a bit of a partnership there already. Um, and again, the chain is you know fast, low transaction, a bit different to other chains in that it doesn't really have the smart contract usage so much, but has a lot built into the base layer, if you like, um, but has a lot of the controls and functions that, that we like around permissionings and transfer and transactions as well. So, you know, a lot of the times we just, we're trying to have an arsenal of things that people can use. I don't, I don't know where we'll end up overall. I suspect you'll see certain chains being used for certain types of instruments in the future. That would be my instinct, but there are, I mean, there's a lot of new chains being introduced all the time, but we're starting to see some be used more and more for transactions. Very interesting. So Ripple was a recent partnership. Um, the interesting thing I think about Ripple also is they already have a lot of connections within the kind of traditional world that may bring you guys to a similar point, if that makes sense. Is that something that you considered or or is there any kind of workings with some of their other partners? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with everyone we work with, there is. I think the the um, I said it the other day to someone like the Ripple team are all fantastic to work with. Anyway, and that means a lot to me that you can kind of collaborate with people and their business is kind of and I forget the names of all the parts, but it's kind of split into two in my mind. There's the payments bit and the other bit. Uh, and what I see happening in financial markets right now is this question about what you can use for payments coming up a bit more because. Ordinarily, we would use cash to pay for things. Um, you know, we might send cash via bank accounts, but if we were settling any form of financial transactions, we'd use cash. And what we've seen with the tokenization of money market funds, uh, actually, sorry, starting with stable coins, like what is it, 130, 150 billion, something like that. Um, those guys are earning interest on other people's money, but it's being used so for such a lot of transactions. Actually, people are starting to pay attention now. I think more volume went through Tether than Visa the other month. So yep. these things are starting to become important. Uh, and then I think some of the people that run money market funds are kind of going, well, hang on a second. If I put my money market fund on chain, I can be used for transactions, uh, much like stable coins, but actually let the user keep some of their yield. Um, and I and I I get quite interested around that point. This idea that why would you have cash? Why would you take bank risk and have something which is usually lower yielding and not even paying you base rate for like, you know, a standard bank account? If I could be holding a money market fund and you whoever would accept it 
as some form of payment. Now there's a lot of regulation that exists around whether this is possible or not. There's a lot of friction doing AML KYC on everyone that holds a security. But this idea that it can be used for a payment. So one of the attractions of Ripple is, you know, they've kind of majored on payments for a, for a long time. So just seeing if there's a way that we can integrate payments on XRPO into their payment network is pretty interesting for me. Mm-hmm.